Hi, I'm Mary Landers. I'm the environment reporter at The Current. I have with me here today Chantal Audrin. Chantal is the executive director at the Tidy Island Marine Science Center. And we are going to be modeling and demonstrating an aquifer today. Hi friends, we are super happy to be helping out The Current with an education piece to help you understand what an aquifer is. You are used to hearing us speak about marine science, but today we're taking a dig at geology and we couldn't be more excited. Alrighty, let's start building our model of a confined aquifer. Our model begins with a basin. A basin is an ocean or a lake bottom, but essentially the cavity of which this aquifer is laying. The first layer that we are coming in with is going to be the bottom of our aquifer. This aquifer is the Floridan aquifer. As you can see here, we have an airline tubing that is acting as our bore through the earth, or a well. This is going to penetrate our sand layer. At the bottom of our airline tube, we have an air stone. This air stone is simply so that during this experiment, we are not sucking up sand into our well because that filter is going to allow us to separate the liquid of, from the solid. We've covered up our wells so that it is at the bottom of our confined aquifer in what is being represented as the Floridan aquifer. You can see that the water is being absorbed immediately into the sand base. If we were to pull water from this aquifer right now, the water is just at the level of the surface of the sand and easy to access at this point where the confining layer, confining layer has yet to be added. Our blue water has been soaked up and stored in the sand. The Floridan aquifer is actually made of limestone. We're using sand to represent the limestone here. If you look at our well, you can very easily see a clear blue line. The blue line is representing the water level at this point, and it's only being pressurized by atmospheric pressure. The water level is equivalent to the level in the aquifer. What we will soon see when we add our confining layer into the model is that the pressure on the top of the sand will start moving and pushing the water out of this well. Alrighty, so we cut out to add in our clay layer. And so we have a nice red clay here, just like in Georgia. The clay layer is the top of our confined aquifer. It is an aquitard, and so it is repelling water. It is not storing water within it. The molecules are too tight in the clay for the water to be stored. Instead, it acts like a cap to our confined aquifer. The confined aquifer is not charged by rainfall like the top layer. Instead, the Floridan aquifer is recharged along the fall line. That's an area across middle Georgia, roughly across Columbus, Macon, Milledgeville, and Augusta, where the limestone of the aquifer rises to the surface. Remember I said the aquifer was in a basin? Well, the fall line marks the prehistoric shoreline of the Atlantic Ocean. Immediately, we can see that our top layer of clay is acting as a pressure on our bottom aquifer, and the sand is forcing water out of the well. This is what we call an artesian well. Alrighty, so now we are coming in with the top layer. This is another sand layer. We will not color this layer so that we can see the difference between the two. What you can see is even with the addition of this next layer, the added pressure is being forced to the bottom layer, pushing the water out of the artesian well. You can even see when I physically push on that surface that I am able to change the level of that well. So we're going to add in water to this top surface. Of course, as the bottom layer's sand is able to absorb the water, so is this layer, so you'll start seeing it absorb rapidly. When water is held in these superficial wells, this is much closer to the surface in comparison to our Floridan aquifer. 
So our water is not going down to the blue level. It is staying at the top because it is not able to pass through the clay. What you can immediately start to see is when we have superficial wells that are next to each other, they are not independent of one another. And so we're going to put a surface well line into this demonstration. You can see our water level has risen even more with the addition of the weight on this layer. And so you're going, we're going to drop in another line and stones so that we can show what happens when we pull too much water out of our surface and artesian well. All right, so we are putting in our surface well. I'm submerging that line beneath the sand and the surface so that you can see that the sand is actually holding quite a bit of water. And so we are going to actively pump this well. What you can see here is that our well is actively pooling and we're getting lots of water at the end of our well line. Now we are actively removing water from the surface wells. And what we will see is that the water is going to start disappearing out of our wells already. The well with the pump emptied first, then the well next to it. The further you are away from the well, the less effect the pumping has on the level of the water table. It is a gradual change. So the level of the underground water around a well has a cone shape. We call this the cone of depression. In confined aquifers, the cone of depression is not a change in the water level itself. Instead, it's a reduction in the pressure head surrounding the pumped well. Remember that artesian well we showed you? As the water is removed from that well, the pressure decreases at that spot in the aquifer and a cone-shaped area is formed around it. 